All right, now at the exciting time, you get to permanently put these together with glue and draw bores. I'm using a glue with a longer open time because that'll give me a chance to get everything straight before the glue sets up. Sit there and crack all this stuff. Just like I did up there. Oh well. All right, so now I gotta deal with this nasty crack that ca that I caused here with the draw bore pin. It's just gonna be uh, gluing it up and then clamping it. But that'll be mostly hidden by the armrest that goes on and the corbel that goes in here. See, I didn't come all the way through with my pegs because I want to put some brass plugs in here and I want to be able to see right where the center of my drill should go. So now the glue is dry and we can cut off these little pegs that are still sticking out. I'm going to use a Ryoba saw, but I don't want the teeth scratching up the freshly sanded wood, so I'm going to use a bit of a card with a little bit of a hole stuck in it.
Now I don't have much time here because this is a five minute epoxy so I gotta kinda work quick in small batches. Looking at these plugs I gotta find the best side and that'll be our side up. For these holes they're a little bit bigger because I use a different drill bit. So I'm going to use tape to keep them from falling all the way in. These holes here are a little tighter. I want them just about flush. I'd rather have them a little proud than inside. Now I could just let that dry for 5-10 minutes and then I can get right back to sanding. With the wooden dowels holding this part in, we won't be able to get any wooden dowels to hold this part in because it'll get stuck up and hung up on there. These are all glued in, so we'll just drill out a new hole. At this point, there's still some of the wood going through this part into the leg, so we don't have to worry about it falling apart. Okay, we're at a point where we're about ready to start gluing things up. Gonna do a quick dry fit. We've got our lettering here on top and in the grooves. So that way I know I'm using all the right pieces here. And then again, got all of our numbering here. Make sure we know right where all of our clamps are going to go. So now we got this out of the clamps and uh, we're looking at it, making sure that uh, everything looks okay. I got some glue squeezed out over here up at the top. Uh, there's some marks where the clamps were at. And put a piece of blue tape here to mark it as uh, one of the two sides. There's a one set of sides and a two set of sides. And that way I know which cross beams to use when we put the sides together. There's some glue squeezed out right here. I've got a Mora knife, which is very much like a chisel, and that's exactly why I got it, because I can sharpen it just like a chisel. But I can get right in here and start scraping off some of that glue. So I'm going to take some 220 sandpaper and get in there and uh, clean up any marks that I made with the knife. I'm also going to clean up any marks left over by the clamps. Remember to check the inside for any glue squeeze out as well. And then I've got a spot here from a clamp and then a spot back here from a clamp as well. Got to sand those out. Another thing, if you have any glue squeeze out here, you can always use a card scraper. Start in the corner and just kind of... And then sand so it matches the rest of the piece. Now we got to work on the draw bores here for the front and the back. Want to make sure we're square. So that's about 38 and an eighth. And that one's about 38 and a quarter. That means this one's farther this way, which makes those two corners farther and these two clo corners closer. Just by a little bit. So we just tap on the front here. Tighten our clamp. And see where we're at. There we go, on square. So now I'm going to be using a brad tip bit drill to mark my holes. So you can see the marks left by the drill bit. I'm just going to take an awl and go right at the very edge of the holes that were there and mark a new spot. 
Well, it only takes a gentle tap to mark these holes. You don't need to hit it and break that tip off of that drill bit. I'm going to initially drill this hole with a very thin bit to hopefully encourage this bit to follow the correct path. Getting ready for the glue up, I checked the number that's right here with that matches in here and that this one matches the one that's back over here. I'm really only focusing on the long grain here, not so much the end grain that's up against here because the long grain is what's going to hold it. The end grain is just going to wick it away. And then there'll be some push out from here as well and it'll go up on the end grain there anyway. You got the curve facing down. See a little bit of glue squeeze out there. So we're good. We're square. I made a bunch of these at the belt sander. You see that in an earlier video. How I do that. Now note about the draw bores on the backs here. They're not really draw bores, they're more like pins. They're not really meant to tighten any joints. They're mainly to strengthen the joints and supplement the glue. I'm not using brass here, just wood pins. The thickness of the mortise wall from the outside of the rail to the inside of the mortise is be the exact same thickness as a brass plug. So I don't want to drill away any of that wood that's in there. Otherwise I might as well just not even use the pins. Besides, I'm sick of cutting brass rods into quarter inch plugs, and they'll be covered by the cushions anyway, so they won't even be seen. Alright, so you can see we pretty much got everything pretty much done as far as the actual woodworking goes. Uh, there's little things we need to take care of here. There's a little bit of play back and forth here. I don't want these rubbing against the, uh, the armrests here. So I happen to have these little discs here that I made from another project. And they just happen to be made of cherry. And they also just happen to fit right in here. So we're going to use these as a washer. Mmm, cherry donuts. Anyway, seriously, you can see that it did a less than perfect job of cutting everything out. A lot of burn marks, some uh, leftover stuff down here. So I put it on a uh, bolt. I'm going to put it right into my drill press here. And I'm going to work up through the sandpapers, through the grits. Start at 80, go to 220. Alright, so I need to drill a 5 8 inch hole right in the center there. Well, close to the center. It won't really matter too much because it'll be between two pieces of wood and no one will really see anything but the edge anyway. So it doesn't matter if it's slightly off center. But they're kind of small and I don't want to hold them with my fingers. So I'm putting them into a pair of uh, these clamps here. And I'm trying to get it just centered, or at least close to it there. I had some tear out. I was afraid of that. Right. 
Well, I think we finally done it. All the sawing, the sanding, the gluing, it's all done. It's ready for finish. Well, almost. Got one more step. I'm going to wipe it down with some mineral spirits and see if any of the glue that we've been using so much of has gotten onto any spots that would be very obvious for uh, once the finish goes on. It can ruin a finish, so I want to check it out beforehand. In regard to the finishing, I had three options. Water Locks Original with the satin finish, the Wipe on Poly, also in a satin, and Armor Seal, also in a satin. I made up a sample board here and finished them the same way I did with the chairs, with the uh, up, sanded up to 220 grit, and then put on each of the finishes to see which one I liked best. You can see here looking at the boards that, looking at the walnut, there's really not much of a difference. Maybe a slight darkness under the water locks, uh, but for the most part there's not that much of a difference. If you stand them alone, you probably wouldn't be able to tell uh, one from the other. The Minox Wipe on Poly is probably the most affordable option, uh, with the armor seal coming in second and the water locks being the most expensive. My initial thought was to use the Minwax since it looked like the other options, but it was the most affordable. But since I've already purchased the water locks and the armor seal, I figured I'd use those up before they go bad. I'll use this on all my other projects coming up, and I'll use these two finishes on this project here. One chair with water locks and one chair with the armor seal. That way I have enough to finish the whole project between the two cans and I don't have to go buy any more. This is armor seal going on the walnut and cherry. This is the water locks. I put four coats of each finish over the entire chair. I put a fifth coat in the high wear areas where all the hands will be at on the, on the handrails and the armrests, on the insides of the chair, and the front legs, and the front stretcher of the legs. The last coat of finish has been drying for three days. There's a bit of dust that's settled onto it and stuff and it's making it feel a little rough. Not as smooth as you'd expect it to be. So I'm going over each chair with the last rag I used to apply finish. The dried finish in the rag makes the rag stiff and it acts a, a bit like a very fine grit sandpaper. I'm not trying to remove any finish, I'm trying just to level out any dust nibs and get anything that might be slightly rough and smooth it out. Man, doesn't that look great? Just imagine how they'll look all put together and in my living room in place of that nasty couch. If you like this one, give me a thumbs up down below and uh, think about hitting the subscribe button and the little notification bell, which helps the channel out, and uh, be able to see the next one where I start putting together some cushions for this chair. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.